Y'all ever been like in your car and you seen these people picking corn and wonder what's going on? Well, we're about to do that right now. We're gonna find out what's going on. Yo, what's up, happy people? I'm Robert Arrington, I'm Deer Meat for Dinner, and we are now in Western Wisconsin, Combine and Corn. What's your name? Tim. We're with Tim in one of the biggest combines in North America. Right now, if you look over there, that's a grain cart. He's filling up the corn, and we are chasing rabbits. These fields get full of rabbits, and when they pick, when they pick the corn, when it shrinks down and they have their last runs, rabbits go flying out of the pins, running for the hills. Well, guess what? Rabbit season is open. So right now, they have this last block to do. When they pick a field, they cut it into sections. And then when one section is done, rabbits and bears and all kinds of stuff run out. Well, I'm after rabbits right now. This is about the size of a big rabbit. We're gonna find out like what my pattern is like. So I figure I'm gonna back up like 25 yards. This right here is a, Ber is a Beretta. A300, it's an Ultima. This gun is perfect for duck hunting and whatnot, but today we're rabbit hunting with it. I'm thinking about this far is perfect. That's about the size of a rabbit. Let's see, we're shooting number nine. That right there, that's a perfect, perfect uh, pattern. So I'll try to head shoot them. They're coming down, man. It's gonna get good fast. Holds three, three shells. And the safety is front of the gun. This gun's lightweight and it really cools up nice. You know what they say, everything is better in bottom land. Now, if you look closely, these are the, the ears there should be kernels of corn on here, but when it goes through the combine, it all gets taken off, so it gets separated. Now people wonder, what is grits? South of the Mason-Dixon line, there were no uh, kernels of corn left on the cob during the Civil War. Well, people were starving to death, so they went out into the field, they picked up the kernels, ground them up, and boiled them until they're edible. That's grits, that's why Grits are so popular in the South because people survived on it during the Civil War. Me, I just love grits. Now, people may say, well, why is there corn on that? You can see where the deer grabbed it and pulled it loose. This was actually picked by a deer or a raccoon. It fell on the ground so the combine can't get it. But this is also good because all winter long when this is all snow, deer and turkeys and everything else, they're out here smelling around, smelling for these that are left in the field. This is a huge part of nutrition for wild game when there's a lot of snow on the ground and not a lot of nuts in the woods. Have you ever wondered how many pieces of silk is on the corn? Well, if you count the kernels, you'll have the same number of silk. When this grows, the silk actually fertilizes the corn. So, every kernel of corn has a piece of silk. That's your tech tip of the week, right here on Deer Meat for Dinner. Now let the rabbit wrangling begin. I got him! Me a rabbit, y'all. That's my first Wisconsin or Wisconsin cottontail right here in front of the, the combines in the cornfield. Now we're up here and we met Jerry and Jim Everett, two brothers who are two of the nicest people I've ever met. They invited us to come, come up, they said we could go deer hunting, but I'm more involved, I'm more enthralled, I'm more intrigued by what's going on in this cornfield than what's going on with the deer right now. They have two companies now. Jim and Jerry run that company. It's Emirates and Sons and Besker Partners. 
I'm honored to be here, and I thank you for watching. Let's kill some rabbits. On a normal day, how many acres of corn do you guys cut? About 300, 330. Do you ever work at night? Oh yeah, yep. Some nights we only run till 10, 11 o'clock, maybe the latest. What's we... what's a reason for you to, to, to not work a day? Let's say you have the conditions are not right. What, what might that be? Uh, it could be drizzling rain or rain, or if it snows a little bit and there's snow stuck on the corn, we can't combine that. No. Then, no. We, then we spend the day fixing and getting ready for the next big push when it's ready to go again. So when we're cutting like this, what are you getting per acre? Like how many bushels? Oh, it's probably running uh, 210, 230, 240, somewhere in there. Golly, man. It varies. Where it's watered, it's better. Where it's not watered, it's a little worse. So we're coming up to the end of the row. And when you get down low, the rabbits are going to come out here, right? Yep. Yep. We get what to the else end of the bite you see? We see coyotes. We see bear. We see... Uh, Have you ever seen a deer come out? Uh, we used to see a lot more deer. Now we don't see much for deer in the cornfields. It's mainly rabbits, coyotes, and bear. They don't see a lot of deer because the deer know we're here and we'll eat the deer. That's fact. Now you watch. The corn comes up and the corn is being shucked, it goes into the combine, and then it gets separated from the husk. So all you have left is the kernel. I'm amazed at how smooth and quiet it is in here. Two rabbits and a bunch of love in my heart. Now let, let that guy deer hunt and then move on to the next field. We got two rabbits. How many pounds do we hold here? We're on about 86,000. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> All that that's out there is in the back of the truck. And we're taking it to the grain bin. We just got a couple nice rabbits, and this is the, the facility where they bring all the corn to. Let me show you where this corn comes from. You guys selling corn? <laughs> all right, so let me, hey Chris, tell me if I'm telling the truth here. So a truck, comes on and weighs himself empty and he gets his net weight. Then he goes to the field and they fill him up and he comes back here and then he gets weighed again. That's the gross weight. Well, the difference is how much corn he has. Then they fall right over there and they open up the slots in the bottom and all the corn comes out and gets held in the cup in the in the grain bin. Well, in the meantime, there's a, a up there there's an arm that when they pull up here, it drops down, whoop, and it sucks up some corn. Then what happens? Sample comes in over here, take it out of there, put it in the moisture tester, record the moisture and test weight. A test weight is they're figuring out how much a bushel of corn weighs. So a bushel is 1.25 square feet. That's a bushel. So when they put it in here, they find out how much moisture is in the corn. 15% is about perfect. That's what they're looking for. The test weight is how much does that bushel weigh? That's what this machine tells you. All right, hey, we're out. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. This guy right here is from Costa Rica. Donde in Costa Rica? Heredia. Oh. Heredia, Santo Domingo. Pura vida, man. Pura vida, man. He's from Costa Rica, too. Yeah. Where are you from? 
Moravia. Moravia? San Jose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. These are great guys that keep everything around here working smooth, man. All right. Well, we had a great time. I learned more about corn than I ever thought possible. And I'm going to show you guys how I grew up cleaning a rabbit. You take a, a, a hatchet and a screwdriver. So you... Austin, unfortunately, or fortunately, is in a tree stand right now deer hunting. There's a reason why I'm not in a tree stand right now. Maybe because I'm tagged out. But anyway, it's time for me to cook for everybody. This is one of those whole rabbits and we're not gonna cook the thing all together. We're gonna separate them like that. So he fits in the pan. Mmm, that's gonna be good. We're gonna start out with taking the lid off and adding some bacon in here. So we're just gonna let that render down and we're gonna lock the heat in like that. Now we have a rabbit that we're gonna cook over the open fire just for a while and get it to bring in some of that natural wood smoke flavor. This here is Everglades fish and chicken, but we're gonna add rabbit to the list. Then I'm gonna come out here with my vegetables. Put it right here in this cast iron skillet. We got onions, green beans, peas, and mushrooms all going in the pot and let it get hot. Now, we've got the rabbit cooking, we've got the bacon rendered down, we got the vegetables. This is gonna be really good. This is gonna be a great lunch. Take the lid off this. Ooh, look at that bacon. And then you take all your, your, your rabbit and just put right in here. All that rabbit is gonna come to life. Woo. Take all our vegetables and pour them right on top. Get all that steam. Now we'll take our lid, put it right on there. If you had that, what would you put it over? Potatoes, rice, or noodles, or something else? What would you put that over? We're gonna find out. We're gonna let it cook for about half hour, 45 minutes on lower heat. So we've raised it up, and now that's lower heat. And uh, we're just gonna let it steam and fall in love. It's gonna be good. Man, what do you think, boy? You want some rabbit? Austin's out there shooting his bow. Floyd's digging in the rice. And we've got some dinner ready. Got some, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. We got a bunch of rice here. We're gonna put that right there in the center. Then we're gonna take some rabbit, put here, just like that, nice leg. Then we're gonna take some vegetables and put right on the side. Hold on. Hey, Croc, you hungry? Croc, you gonna eat or no? Later? You hungry? Come on, then. Thought for sure he was gonna shoot his bow. He's like heavily involved with shooting his bow, so he kills a monster. Looks good. Okay, can you explain to me what happened with running into the hay bale this morning? Floyd and I were in a mild side-by-side -side accident this morning. <laughs> yeah, mild. <laughs> To put it mildly, they hit a hay bale in the middle of the dark, but it, it's neither here nor there. I was firmly in my bed asleep. Is it good? Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. Thank you for this amazing trip and keeping my family safe. Lord, please be with us and guide us and nourish this food to our body. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, you guys. Hey, me and Floyd are still alive. That's a lot to be thankful for. I'm a little rough, though, after the hay bale wreck. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look how good that looks.
Mm, this is very tender. I did not expect it to be so tender, but it is. Really tasty. Yeah? Good. What about the vegetables? I've got to be truthful. This is the first time in a long time I've cooked rabbit, and it's the first time I've hunted rabbit in years and years and years, but it's amazing. I want to take this time to thank Jim and Jerry very much for having us along and showing us everything that goes into the corn and the bean production. And I want to dedicate this video to Mr. Abesker, who started that company, and Jim and Jerry were very, very close to, and he passed away and they carried on his legacy. I learned more in the past few days than I have in years and years and years of just seeing cornfields and thinking I knew what was going on. So hey, that's all I've got for today. Go out, hunt some rabbits, try not to get run over by a bear, and we'll see you soon. Take care, God bless, and we gone.